I tend to get a lot of bruising. I don't know if that's because I'm so fatigued that I'm smacking into things, but I do think they happen more easily depending on what med medication I'm taking or analgesics like for pain. Ibuprofen totally makes me bruise so much more easily. Um, the, the bruise on my lower leg to the inside, it was huge. And I just woke up with it like that. And I was like, where the heck did this bruise come from? I've got little bruises when Lacey runs up and jumps and her paws go on me. Sometimes I'll have a paw-shaped bruise. And I think that's probably directly related to how much ibuprofen I've been taking, also related to the prednisone. It could also be a Sjogren's thing. Um, and one thing kind of leads to another. If we're in a flare, we're fatigued, we're tired, our muscles ache more, um, we're, we're more likely to smack into things, uh, we're more likely to be taking something for the aching and the pain and the migraines that might leave us um, more vulnerable to the bruising. So the vascular symptoms that I've experienced are um, when I overheat, like overheat, and you know, it usually just happens from my knees down. I get this petechiae, eye and um, that's what it looks like. It's these little red spots that are very dense and close together and some of them are melding into each other with all this redness um, and that is it's like it could be considered bruising it takes as long to go away and heal as a bruise does and that tends to happen sometimes with people with primary Sjogren's I'm not saying it doesn't happen to secondary um, a secondary Sjogren's condition because secondary can become systemic too. Um, I, I really, in my opinion, there's really no distinction. There, there shouldn't be. There's just this tendency um, of primary Sjogren's being more systemic, I guess. You know, for some reason, the teeniest, tiniest blood vessels, the capillaries, one of the very smallest branches off of the the veins and the arteries which attaches right to the muscle and bone and tissue and organs and such um, so for some reason those capillaries dilate they get more open and heat will do that anyways but it shouldn't make you break out in such a bad rash that i have also heard it referred to as vasculitis. Although I think um, a more severe vasculitis affects you everywhere and can lead to open sores. Mine doesn't lead to open sores and once I air out my skin and cool down my skin it does tend to get better. Um, prednisone also makes it better but it doesn't just go away overnight. Um, it tends to take two or three weeks and it just fades and fades more and fades and fades kind of like a bruise does and before it goes away before you don't notice it anymore um, I've not experienced it in probably five years because I've been on prednisone every day and I'm hoping that it won't start happening again as I De slowly, slowly decrease off the prednisone, but we'll see. Another thing that happens is my hair growth on my legs has decreased a lot. And I think that's vascular because there's not enough blood flow to feed the hair growing process, those hair follicles. So because the body's really smart, it's gonna save that energy um, and put it into more vital organs. Um, and so I think that's why the loss of hair growth, it could also um, be from methotrexate. It could have been from the Plaquenil that I took for so long. 
Um, but this lack of hair growth began long, long before um, my Sjogren's diagnosis. It was a symptom that I had and didn't even realize it was a symptom. So the last vascular complication that I wanted to talk about and something I experienced, it occurs in the small blood vessels in the brain. Um, but the ones in the brain, um, for many, many years, I had no idea what they were. They just told me they were white spots or technically what was written on my MRI results review was areas of hyper opacity. 